Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I'm going to complete an interesting test. I'm going to hit five shots with four different hybrids. So for the different hybrids, they're all going to have different lofts. So the hybrid is a very important club for a lot of players to play to help with their gapping. A lot of times we'll find that with their longer irons, players may struggle to get the ball up in the air to carry a little further and help complete their gapping when they're set. So I mentioned I'm going to hit four different clubs. These are all the Callaway Maverick Max hybrids. I'm going to hit the three, the four, the five, and six hybrid, all with the same golf shaft. There is a difference in loft with these particular hybrids. So with the Callaway Maverick Max, the three hybrid has 19 degrees of loft on it. The four hybrid has 21. The five hybrid has 24. And the six hybrid has 27 degrees of loft. So I'm excited to just take a look at numbers and compare the differences between these clubs. I'm going to try and swing same normal golf swing with all the old models. I'm going to explain the differences in ball speed, the differences in loft, differences in height, differences in spin, and really explain to you golfers who should particularly play these particular clubs and how these particular clubs are important in gapping out your golf set. To begin, I've got the Callaway Maverick Max 6 Hybrid. This club's got 27 degrees of loft on it. I do expect of the four clubs we're hitting that this is probably going to go the shortest, maybe have a little higher trajectory and come down with a little steeper attack angle. So this was an interesting test to take a look at numbers and see the differences between a 3 hybrid, a 4 hybrid, a 5 hybrid, and a 6 hybrid. So for these 20 golf swings, I just tried to swing a nice smooth golf swing, same kind of speed all the way through. You will notice the differences in club speed. That is because each club, as we go from a 6 hybrid to a 5 hybrid to a 4 hybrid to a 3 hybrid, is going to be longer. So a longer golf shaft is going to generate a little bit more club speed. Uh, so if we look here and can take a look at the differences. So first we start with uh, the six hybrid. So the six hybrid had 92.7 miles an hour. Five hybrid, 94.6. Four hybrid, 97.6. And three hybrid, 99.7. So there was about a two to three mile an hour difference there in club speed between them all. And that's just the length of the golf club that is a longer golf club is going to generate a little bit more club speed. The further you hit it, the club speed is going to be your potential distance and it's going to allow you to hit the ball further. But it does make it a little harder to hit straighter with the, when you have a longer golf club. And we'll take a look at the dispersion pattern a little bit later here. I would also expect as we go through this uh, I would also expect as we compare the 3, 4, 5, and 6 hybrid, some changes in ball speed. Now normally between each club, I like to see about a 4 to 5 mile an hour difference. So let's see how close we were with each club. So the 6 hybrid we first started had 137.1 average ball speed. The 5 hybrid was 141.2. The 4 hybrid 147.8. The three hybrid was 151.3. So it was about a four to six mile an hour difference between each club. And I bring up five mile an hour ball speed because this is important to pay attention to gapping. So a lot of times when players come into me and their their three iron and the four iron are kind of doing the same thing. And we look at the ball speed numbers, they're pretty similar, and then the three irons lie in the same height as the four iron. I'm like, you know what? We need to find something that's got a little less loft on it, something that's going to be a little more forgiving to get, the, to get help with your gapping. We gap through ball speed. So if we can gap through ball speed, get like about a four or five mile an hour difference between each club, that's how you're going to generate some gapping. So speaking of that gapping, so let's take a look at the carry distance and see 
Normally I like to say about a 10 to 15 yard difference across the board. So let's look and see if there's any difference between these clubs. So between the six hybrid and the five hybrid, I have a 12 yard gap. So 213.2 to 225.3. Between the five hybrid and the four hybrid, there's 11 yard gap, 225 to 236. And then the three hybrid will notice, towards, sorry, the difference between the four hybrid and then the three hybrid you'll notice is 236 to 244. Notice how that gets a little bit closer together. That's because the loft is a little bit closer together with those two models. So notice how the Maverick Max, the four hybrids 21 degrees and the three hybrids 19 degrees. We would probably need a hybrid or something else that's got a little stronger loft or maybe that four hybrid to have a little more loft on it to help with gapping. So that's carry yard gapping. We'll notice the total distance is gonna be pretty good across the board. So we'll notice total distance, we have a 13 yard gap between the six hybrid and the five hybrid. We have a 12 yard gap between the five hybrid and the four hybrid. And then we have an 11 yard gap between the four hybrid and the five hybrid. So that's the length of the golf club that helps, but also the loft on the golf club that also helps to generate the gapping between each club. So dynamic loft is also important to pay attention to. So a lot of players will come in and they may present the club differently. They may not compress the ball, or they may leave that club face a little bit open. So dynamic loft is one way for us to get the ball to go a little further or go a little higher. What I would expect is the three hybrid, because it has the least amount of loft on it, to have the lowest dynamic loft. So we'll notice at 14.9 it was the lowest. The four hybrid was next at 15.9. The five hybrid was next at 18.9, and the six hybrid was next at 21.3. So we have a range of about six, just a little over six degrees in dynamic loft. And when we're testing these clubs, we have a range from 19 degrees to 27 degrees. So there was about an eight degree difference there too. So dynamic loft is going to be pretty closely aligned with the loft on the golf club but it's always going to be less than the loft on the golf club due to compression. If you generate a lot of dynamic loft, so if the dynamic loft's higher than the amount of loft on the golf club, that means you're leaving that club face pretty wide open. And I recommend working with a club fitter to one, get club fit to, into the right loft, lofted golf club, but also work with an instructor there too to try and work on compressing the ball a little bit better there as well. So that's kind of the influence of dynamic loft. The other trend we notice here is height. So from the three hybrid to the six hybrid, there's a trend. The three hybrid had the lowest height at 108 feet in the air. The six hybrid had the highest height at 130 feet in there as well. I always like to bring up that landing angle piece. So normally a hybrid's gonna complement an iron. So we'll notice the landing angle with my three hybrid here was 43, it was slightly on the lower side. Um, if I was trying to use that three hybrid to get it come into the green and stop on the green, it's going to be a little harder to stop. So notice it took about 15 yards for that thing to stop. If we scroll all the way to the bottom and look at the six hybrid, we'll notice the difference from 213 to 223. Notice that ball stop within about 10 yards. That is to do with the light landing angle being at 50 degrees. So it's really kind of important there to pay attention to the height that you're hitting a particular shot and the landing angle when you're hitting a particular shot there as well. Um, if we look here, kind of really interesting to see my attack angle when I'm hitting a hybrid was basically neutral. We're talking zero point, negative 0 0.1 to negative 0 0.4. And actually the six hybrid was dead zero at 0, 0.0. So I was really trying to pick it pretty cleanly and not take too much turf with the hybrid. I recommend trying to take just a little bit and just hit down on it just ever so slightly like the four hybrid here who knows at negative 0.4. But we don't want to take massive divots, so you definitely want to pick that hybrid kind of nice and clean off the, off the ground. Finally, I want to talk on the curve. So this is kind of really interesting. Players know that I like to curve the ball a lot right to left. Kind of interesting today when I was hitting the three hybrid, I was curving that one the most the six hybrid was curving the least. So least amount of curve to the left and we'll notice a trend from six hy hybrid to five hybrid to four hybrid to three hybrid from the least amount of curve to the most amount of curve. So I wanna bring up dispersion because this is really important to touch on. So 
The first thing we'll notice is this very, very large circle. So this blue circle here. So we'll notice the, the three hybrid. The three hybrid has the least amount of loft. It is going to be the hardest club for me to hit. So that's why the dispersion pattern is a little bit larger. The six hybrids got the most amount of loft. So it's kind of interesting how that white circle is very small compared to all the others. And you'll notice a trend of going from smaller to larger with regards to these dispersion size. Now there's five dots in each circle, so the same amount of shots with each club. It's kind of interesting just seeing the six hybrid flying a little bit straighter. And then as we go all the way up here, we'll notice how my tendencies start to kind of follow suit, I guess, with the three hybrid curving a little more right to left and being a little bit harder to hit consistent every single time. Now that's carry distance. We switch it to total distance. You can see very, very similar with regards to kind of dispersion pattern across the board there too. So hybrids are very important clubs to help with your gapping, to help with your gapping, help to replace a long iron. They are really, really forgiving clubs to hit. One thing you'll notice when I was hitting these hybrids today is every single shot that I hit, my height was over 100 feet in the air. So they are designed to fly fairly high, fairly high and come in with a relatively steep landing angle. So for players out there that need a little help to get the ball up in the air, players that, especially if your club speed is on the slower side, a hybrid is a great option. It's important to work with a club fitter to decide whether you should make that transition from an iron, whether that be with a six hybrid instead of a six iron, a five hybrid instead of a five iron, a four hybrid instead of a four iron, or a three hybrid instead of a three iron, and whether you should maybe play one or two hybrids in your bag. I'm probably not the best candidate to play a couple of different hybrids in my bag, but I think the, this data just gives us a good example of the differences between what a six hybrid can do and what a three hybrid can do for a specific player.